Hola, amigos, I am back. I'm sorry this isn't a live tutorial. You're gonna to have to make do with me recorded because my trusted confidant and husband, uh, the famous, the now famous Christopher, my sidekick in all of this, has very rudely had to go off and do some actual work. How dare he? Now that the pandemic has waned a little. So all of the jobs that didn't happen in 2000, in 2020 are now happening. So anyway, there we are. There you have it. We're all on our own some. Uh, it's very exciting though. So basically I am going to be showing you today. Oh, look at that gorgeous thing. How to make a wool tops wreath, which is actually really, really easy when you know how, and actually potentially could take as little as 10 minutes, although maybe allow half an hour. Um, we have three different kits. But before I start, I just want to emphasize these kits are basic kits with this color and this color. They do not come with all the accoutrements, all the decorations. You have to buy those separately, I'm afraid, sorry. But that does give you, you know, lots of poetic license to do whatever the hell you want. So that's good. So if you don't like the bird, you don't have to get the bird kind of thing. All right, so this is option one. So you have a green wreath with a pink bow. And then, oh, I didn't show, I actually, do you know what? I actually had Perez the pink felted poodle on here as well. Oh yeah, sorry, he fell off on the way. Uh, or option de, option dos, option T, so multilingual, um, is this white one with, of course, a uh, Christmas pudding pom-pom in the middle. And I've added a little felted sprig of holly with berries wreath, um, brooch. But you can see, so this basic, basic version of the kit that you would get if you bought the kit is the white with the green. And then I've added on these bits afterwards, just to avoid confusion. We don't like confusion, do we? Uh, managing expectations, that's what we call it here. Okay, and then this is option three, tres, trois. Don't ask me to do it in any other languages because I do not know any other languages. Uh, this is the one we actually we've got on the door at the Fluffatorium at the moment. So if you visit us, you will see it in all its glory. So obviously you get this ice, I think they call it ice queen, this colour. Not ice cream, ice queen, which is a pale turquoise. And then you get a red bow. And obviously I have put these rather delightful little toadstools here, there and everywhere on this version. So I'm going to show you how to do this. It's a bit like giant crochet. But you're only going to use your hands but don't think it's complicated because it's not once you get the hang so without further ado let us commence one more thing before we start okay i just want to tell you what you actually get when you open the bag after you've bought a kit you get a wireframe okay so this is what we're going to work around to make the wreath and hold it all together you get a whopping great 300 gram bag of wool tops which should all be in one long length. That's Merino wool tops, it's the real McCoy. And then you also get about a metre, I think it is, of the bow colour of your cho of your choosing. Okay, so get your main wool tops ready. Make sure um, that it's going to unwind easily. It should all be in one long piece. If it does break, I will show you later how to join the break. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a loop. Okay, so that means crossing one over, one, one end over to make a loop like that. And then just bringing that through the middle, like so. Okay, so making a little loop like that. You don't want to leave too much of a tail here because all of this wool is quite precious. Okay, so you're gonna need as much of it as you can. So just a little tail is fine. And then you just want a little loop. So you want enough to maybe just fit two fingers through. You don't want it to be, you don't want it to be a giant loop like that. You want it to be more of a sort of two finger loop. Okay, so let's go with that. Okay, so that's essentially your first loop. And then you're gonna place your wool over the top of your frame and you're gonna bring it underneath and make a second loop. Okay, I'll just get a bit more wool off here like that. Okay, so now we've got two loops. So now I'm going to put my hand through the two loops and then I'm going to bring that one through and make a new loop. 
And this time, keep your loops quite small because then the wool will go further. You don't want these loops to be too big. So we're going to go under the frame and we're going to make a second loop and then over the frame and through the middle. OK, do it again. And obviously you're working around it here. So you'd be conscious that of that as you go. So first loop, then we're going underneath the frame, coming up making a second loop and then we're coming through the middle of the two and you can see how it starts to form the wreath okay so enough for two fingers through the middle okay then I'm going underneath and bringing a second loop so my two fingers go through the first loop and the second loop and then over the top through the middle okay so I'm just going to work my way around here I've got my wool here let's just get some more free Okay, so I've got my first loop here. I'm going underneath, making a second loop. So keeping these loops as small as possible, okay, over the top and through. And if you're wearing loads of rings like I am, you might want to take them off because it does catch on your rings really easily, actually. So just enough, just big enough for two fingers each time, okay? So I'm going underneath and then I'm bringing it up, making a second little loop. So now I've got my two loops and then I'm coming over the top and through. Okay. And all the time being conscious that you're making the wreath here. So you can see how these almost like stitches are starting to form. Okay. And then obviously on the back, this is happening. All right. So this is how we're going to cover the wire frame and go all the way around. And it does take quite a lot of length of wool, so that's why we're being quite sparing with it, because you don't want to run out, okay? So free up some more of your wool tops. Two fingers through here, then it's coming underneath and another little loop, okay? And then we're coming over the top and through. All right, so each time you've got two loops. So there's my first loop, then underneath, because that's what joins it onto the frame, and I'm making a second loop. And then I'm coming over the top and through, okay. And then you can just push it to where it's meant to be. And if necessary, you can push it tighter if you need to, or you can loosen it up a bit and you'll see. And if you go wrong, you know, it's absolutely fine to undo this and start again. But this is the premise of how it works. This is how you're gonna do it. So tiny loop with two fingers sticking through. Then I'm going to go underneath the frame and bring up and make another little loop there okay and then I'm coming over the top and through okay it doesn't really matter which way my wool tops is facing but you don't want to twist it up too much okay so try and keep it sort of running free as it were so there's the loop and I'm going to go underneath and make my second loop okay and then let me just get some more free and then I'm going to come over the top and bring it through. So first loop underneath, second loop and keep it nice and tight all the time. So don't have too much excess. So you've just, just got enough to get two fingers through and then I'm grabbing it with my two fingers and bringing it through. OK, so I'm actually nearly there. Look how fast it is. And I've still got that much left. OK, so there's my first loop. I'm just going to push this round a little bit, actually. There's my first loop. And then I'm just going to sort of untwist it a little bit because it's getting a bit twisted as I go. And then I'm going to come underneath. There's my second loop. OK, and then I'm coming through. There we go. And then just make sure your stitches are sitting how you want them. You can just sort of fiddle around with it a bit till it sits properly on the wreath on the on the frame okay and then again I'm just going to untwist this it's got a bit twisted up in its ball okay first loop okay and I'm going to go underneath there's my second loop okay and then and over the top and through okay and then I'm actually just going to move this around a bit so I've got plenty of wool left to finish this off so that it's got lots of nice stitches all the way around and I'll show you how to finish it off at the end as well okay so we're going to go underneath again 
let's just get it running free underneath second loop over the top and through okay I'm nearly there actually first loop and then underneath second loop over the top and through okay I think I'm going to get one more in before I finish it off okay so first loop underneath second loop and through okay actually maybe I can do one more <laughs> having said that underneath through like that okay so you can see on the back it's completely covered and on the front there's your wreath okay so it's all about really now is about how to finish it off so obviously I've got a loop here and then I've got that bit from when I first started I've got that tail which actually could be a little bit tighter okay guys now I'm going to show you how to finish it off I mean obviously you're going to have a bow at the top okay but I'm going to um, show you what to do to have a nice neat finish at the top and then how to add your bow okay so let's just go through how to finish this off so here's my final little loop okay i am going to just feed my i've broken my tail off about six to eight inches long i'm just going to feed that through my final loop okay and then i think it gives it quite a nice finish as if you go back through the original loop okay and you're left with these at the top okay and then what you can do is just splay out the wool a little and make sure that everything's sitting how you want it to sit okay um tighten these two up at the top a little and then if you want to you can just bring that round okay and then on the back just tuck it in just tuck it in no one's going to see it just weave it through a couple of those I hope you like my glittery nail varnish and um, the same the other side as well there we go through there and through there and I'm just trying to imagine what people are would be asking me if this was alive and I'm imagining people would say well if you've got any wool left I have got that much left okay so it worked out just slightly more than I needed okay so this is now where I'm going to be doing my bow okay so I'm going to get my my bow colour and I'm just going to bring it round and literally tie a bow, okay? But what I want to show you is maybe just how to hide the join if you want to. So I'm going to tie that bow relatively tight, but not too tight. And then what I can do is I can just splay this out. So you should end up with quite a nice, neat finish at the top. Okay, um, and obviously everyone knows how to tie a bow, but you can tie the bow however you like to tie the bow. You could wire it if you wanted to, and you could put some wire in there. Oh, I haven't done it very well. I want to mow. Actually, you need one side slightly longer than the other side, don't you, Gillian? Um, let's try that one more time with feeling. There we go. Okay. So there's my bow at the top okay then I just want to talk you through um, options so on this one actually I had just put a giant pom-pom on top of the bow okay um, and then I want to talk you through all of the different things I've done here so this one has got some of our feathered birds on it it has got some of our pom-poms that we sell in a pack and then some of our little mini bells. We've also got lots and lots of jingly bells. Actually, let's come back to me for this bit. I'm just imagining Chris is gonna watch back my edit of this and just be like. <sighs> Gillian. Well, maybe I'll make him come back actually. <laughs> so um, this is a pom-pom just made with our pom-pom maker set. These are the feathered birds we sell. These are the pom-poms we sell, as I've just mentioned. Then I must just show you the little toadstools. They come, they're wired and they come in a pack of how many are in the pack? 10, okay? So 
um, I don't know, you, you might want loads, but that's just 10 randomly scattered, okay, on that one. Um, what else have I got to show you? We do have, as I as I speak, we do have these little uh, holly brooches and mistletoe brooches. We do at the moment still have Perez, the poodle, the felted poodle. We also have Marmalade, the cat. So obviously you could add those on as well. We have these amazing rainbow pom-poms, which I absolutely love. We have Christmas, we've got loads and loads of pom-poms. Uh, we have Christmas coloured pom-poms. We have fluorescent coloured pom-poms, or of course you could make your own pom-poms. So um, a bit like I've done on this white one. So we actually now sell a Christmas pudding pack, so you can make Christmas pudding pom-poms. Uh, so you can have Christmas pudding pom-poms on top. Literally, the world is your oyster. We have all these bells. We have them in green, we have giant bells in green, giant bells in red, we have giant bells in white, we have giant bells in gold. We have ribbons galore. So, um, right, what I'm gonna show you now though is what to do if your wool tops breaks, because that might cause a little bit of a moment if you're not sure what to do. Okay, so here's what to do if you've got a break in your wool tops that wasn't planned or has happened accidentally. What you need to do is just get a little bit of thread to tie it together with, okay? Just going to use some contrasting coloured thread okay and by nature it tapers when it's broken it sort of goes to a taper so get it overlapping a fair amount a few inches overlapping okay get some thread and just tie it together relatively securely okay there's one and then I'm going to tie it a second time about an inch away Okay, and just keep in mind it's a little bit delicate because you've had to tie it together. What I will do actually is just trim off those mahoosive ends. I don't need those mahoosive ends of thread. Okay, so there it is temporarily back together again. And then I'm just going to carry on now with my wreath. So there's my first loop coming under for my second loop. Okay, and then over the top and through. Okay, there's my loop with my tied bit together. Okay, just treating it relatively delicately, obviously, but you probably would anyway, to be honest. Second loop there. Okay, and then I'm coming through like that. Okay, and then we just carry on. Okay, now we're past the danger point. Okay, I just want to show you then how to remove that. I mean, it's fairly obvious. Just going to remove the, the tied bits of thread. Um, but let's just go back to that now. So then if you want to get rid of this, you just get your little scissors and just snip away this tie, okay? And the other one's in there somewhere, but actually it's hidden and I can't see it. Um, and that will hold together, okay? And there's no need for any sort of alarm because that shouldn't unravel. I mean, if one is hidden, you can actually just leave the hidden one there or if you wanted to, you could snip that one away as well. But I've done this quite a lot with the uh, giant knitting and giant crochet and so on. Um, and it should be fine once it's all wound in and wound together. All right, so there shouldn't be an issue with it. But the main thing to remember is to overlap those pieces before you tie them together, okay? Then it should be fine, okay? And then you can just carry on and finish as you did before, okay? now. Some of you might be in possession of one of these diddy ones of these, okay? Uh, this is done in exactly the same way, but when you get your diddy kit to make one of these, it's a meter of wool tops. And the way this works is that we split it up. We split it up lengthways like that, and then we split it up into sort of what I call pencil widths, pencil roving widths. Okay. So you end up with four of those. So actually, when you're making the Diddy version of this, you are going to be tying them together. Okay, So that's exactly what you would do if you're making the smaller one. You're going to overlap the pieces. Okay, And then you are going to be, probably need a bigger piece of yarn than that. You are going to be um, tying them together. Let's just cut a bit off there 
so. Okay. And then you would weave the wreath in exactly the same way. And there's my top bit there when it's finished. Okay guys, I hope my explanation was clear and that you are now feeling enthused to make a wreath. Um, and you could probably tell it doesn't take very long. Like once you've got the hang of the two loops and then through, it's quick. And then the fun bits, decorating them. And then you could obviously put them on your front door or your internal doors or above the mantelpiece, above the fireplace. Wool is naturally flame retardant. I don't know about all the other bits that we put on top of it. <laughs> so, um, so I will tag the kits or whatever it's called, do a link to the kits <laughs> on here. Uh, so kit option A, the green with the pink, kit option B, the white with the green, kit option C, the blue with the red. Okay, bye for now.